KP Alexander for the Rabbit Dogs Unleashed. And today is Wednesday, February 9th, 2022. How's everybody doing? Doing great. Fantastic. I'm here to uh, talk about, uh, you know how people sometimes say, no one's better than you. Everybody's equal. Nobody's better than anybody else. You're just as good as everybody else. That is so not true. Not true at all. There are people way better than me. Uh, I know people that I'm way better than. It's just the way it is. It's just uh, an inconvenient fact of life. Um, a couple of years back, when I was living in Sao Paulo, Brazil, there was uh, a couple of people from the Fulbright. They got Fulbright scholarships years earlier. Uh, whatever that is, Fulbright, I think it's something like some people get picked every year to get Fulbright scholarships to college or whatever, I guess. And uh, these people are the creme de la creme of uh, human beings. So they had like five of them coming through town in Sao Paulo when I was there. And they were going on a tour, a Fulbright tour, I don't know. And they were talking about their uh, experiences being Fulbright scholars and such. And uh, I remember reading the bios on these these uh, individuals. I think it was five guys, as if, if I remember. And one of them was, uh, he had a PhD in microbiology, something, and a master's in literature. He, he had like several degrees, and he was a... Uh, he had uh, done a few Ironman triathlons. I'm not talking about... Like, I had done some Olympic size triathlons. No, Ironman. Hawaii Ironman triathlons with the 2.4 mile swim in the open ocean, uh, 112 miles on a bicycle, and a 26 mile full marathon. And they said he was doing a sub three hour ma- 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 marathon. And his bio was like a page long, where mine would have been like a couple of, uh, not even a, a paragraph long. <laughs> And uh, I remember he came out to dinner with a whole bunch of us, you know, uh, first come, first serve, you can go out to dinner with us and meet these Fulbright scholars. So uh, I remember I went and I was at the dinner and uh, it was at a Brazilian steakhouse called La Chihascaria. You pay one price, you get to eat all the meat you want, a salad, and you get a big salad bar and all that sort of thing. So it was... This one guy that I'm just mentioning, he sat next to me. And if his bio on the page didn't look perfect enough, him in, in, in appearance, he had perfect head of hair. He was just like a male model, he gorgeous. Uh, he wore a suit that he wore. The, the suit didn't wear him. He wore the suit. The suit was like if he took it off with that suit, no one else could have pulled off that suit except him. That suit was like made... For his body, it was so perfectly, it was like it was painted on him, it was perfect. And the guy was just in physical top shape, he was a specimen, not even the same species as I am, you know. So he introduced himself to everybody, everybody met, met him, he shook him, and he said, perfectly manicured nails. The guy was just a perfect human being, you know, and his voice was so soft spoken. And he used words so elegantly, and he was just, just extremely respectful to everybody. And I remember him sitting at the dinner uh, table with all of us, and I'm I'm next to him, and uh, he's drinking some red wine, and he had a little rice and beans, you know. But he's not picking out; he's he's eating very slowly. He's got a little bit of meat on the plate, not a lot. Some vegetables, you know. I got this big, huge thing of just meat and rice and beans and pork. And, and I had a big beer next to me, and I'm like, just eating like a fucking slob, you know. I'm like, <laughs> as I'm eating, I sound like a pig. My, my, if my nose was up like that, uh, I wouldn't have been chucked. I was just eating, and I, I couldn't swallow. It was just, and I'm, I'm, I'm washing it down with this big beer, and I'm just like, sweating, I'm, I'm just going to town on this food, and he's sipping me, and people ask him his opinion on something, and he's, well, I feel 
that the uh, song to go from Ipanema has a chord progression that I really think it's going from the E to the F sharp. Oh, so he's just speaking a whole other language than I am about something. And I'm just got my head down and I'm eating. And I could hear him speaking next to me. He's sitting like right here and he's speaking to people. And he's just walked down and he's just speaking and he's holding court among everybody. And I look up for my food like just looking at everybody, looking at him. And this one good looking woman uh, dressed really nice she's looking at him just mesmerized she's just in like awe of this man she's like wow she's probably just just like oh, I wish I, this guy will take me home tonight and she's like and then she looks over and she catches my eye and I could just see her look go and she looks back at him and her impression was, what is this guy doing here? What is, why is he, if she could speak then, if she could just, you know, say anything she wants to at that moment, it would be, why are you in my frame? I'm, my frame is of this perfect, and you're just, I'm, I'm eating a whole, a hunk of pork, I have like a, a, you know, a, a kind of blazer hanging out of my, my mouth. I'm like, I'm washing it down with beer. I, I'm chewing like like a fucking horse. There's no way that uh, the word man, uh, you know, if that means him, what am I? I can't be the same thing as this guy is. It's just amazing. And, and her face was like, why is this guy in... The frame. Why get out? Of, it's like a perfect picture. It's like a Mona Lisa with, you know, in the background is the dogs playing cards, you know? <laughs> it's just, why are you in the frame? And um, it was, it was, I mean, if she wasn't thinking that, I sure was at that point. I was like, why am I even here? Why was I, why am I allowed to sit at this table? Why, I was just, it was just first come, first serve it the American consulate, which I was working for there at the time. And I was just like, oh, I'd like to meet some Fulbright scholars. You know, I don't even know what it was. I just wanted to go to, it's a dinner. I probably had to draw a few bucks. I don't know, but all I know is, like, you know, what am I doing here? Like, among this this guy, not just all of them, five of them at this table, he, he he was the one who was just sitting next to me. There was others who were just as impressive. How could he get that many degrees and still have time to get in shape to do a tri an Ironman triathlon? Like, what is the guy? How is the guy sitting here eating with us? How does he have time to do this? It, it's just like, well, this morning I woke up at 5 o'clock in the morning. I did a 17-mile run. Then I studied for six hours. Then I, I mean, it's just, I, I, I can't, I, I can't, I don't even know what he's doing at this. He's one of these guys who one day, you know, look at him as, as a, a politician and you're going to be, wow. And people are going to vote for him because he's so mesmer. Not that he has any good ideas. Not that he's going to get us out of the fucking mess we're in right now. But I don't even know the guy's name. It's, he's probably somebody important right now because he just has that, that, that. And yes, he's better than me. He's a better human being than me. I can't say no one's better than me. No, no, he was better than me. I know for a fact he's better than me. Uh, there's guys in jail who molest little kids. I'm better than them. I can pretty safely, I can say that, I'm sorry to say. So yes, there were better people than other people. So when people say no one's better than you, nobody, we're all equal. That is bullshit and you know it. Nobody thinks we're all equal. No one thinks everybody on this planet is equal. We're not, okay? There are some people better than others. Unfortunately, that's just the truth. And this guy was just giving gifts. His look was like, he looked like a male model. And, uh, you know, his IQ was off the charts. And he just had, I mean, and he was in great physical shape. I don't know. The only thing that could be fair is if he died early of 
uh, cancer. That's really because he had everything. I don't know what. I mean, maybe he 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 beat his wife. I don't know. I don't know. But from what I saw next to me, I was like, uh, what am I, I? I don't even belong here. And I was wearing a suit at the time, but it's, I didn't look anything. I, my suit was nothing near what his suit was. Uh, I, I just, it just, I didn't. It just, I. I don't know what to say. It's just uh, when you look at somebody, sometimes you're like, "How? How am I here, eating next to this guy, this specimen of a human being?" And everybody was just mesmerized by him. Men and women. Men wanted to hang around with him. W women wanted to be with him. And then I'm next to there, like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> drinking a downing a beer and eating pork. And uh, it's, I don't know, I don't know wh why I was there, why I was allowed to sit next to this guy, but it just really, you know, I remember it, it pounding into me that you are not a, you're not a good looking guy, you're, you're not that good looking, and uh, you're really average, you're really an average, which most of us are, but you really get to see sometimes somebody who's way above average. And your averageness just looks even that much more mediocre in comparison. It's like comparing Gone with the Wind to fu fucking uh, a really bad film. I don't know. Uh, the, the Room. Uh, it's like, you know, that, that, I mean, okay, I'm not that, I'm not as bad as The Room of a movie, and, you know, but uh, excellence, excellence sometimes is right in front of you sometimes, and uh, yeah, that's uh, probably why some people vote for Pete. I mean, maybe Joe Biden was like that early in his career, back in 1972. He might have been like that. He might have been mesmerized. People might have been wow, just you know, just in awe of him when he was speaking in 1972. I don't know, but now, uh, I don't think he has that anymore. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Maybe some people feel he does still have that. I don't think so. I know Bill Clinton had that. That's for sure. I know Obama had that. Uh, I know Bush and Trump didn't have that. Maybe because they were Republicans. I don't know. But uh, my God, was this guy just uh, leagues above me as human being? Just in what he accomplished and what have I accomplished, you know, it, it, it's like if there was a uh, bidding for me and a date with me and him and uh, he came up, you know, I probably would maybe get $72 and some old lady just, you know, bid $72 and everybody else is like, the bidding starts at a hundred. She says seventy-two dollars. That's what I got it in my, my person. Okay, going once, going twice, seventy-two dollars, and then that guy comes up and he has two trophy wives bidding on him with husband's money. We got nine thousand eight hundred going once. I got to the ten thousand. We got ten thousand. Got ten thousand to Mrs. So and So. And then, oh, going once, going twice, you got a date with him for $10,000. And then she's like, I'm going to bet him down. I'm going to pay him like $10,000. He better shag me proper. And uh, a good-looking trophy wife who's got an 80-year-old husband, but who, who's like 38 herself, you know. Uh, and she's with this, this, this god of a man. And uh, I got $72. <laughs> it's only been $72 to go out with. Me as an, an old lady who just wants somebody to talk to. And, hey, I could talk. God knows that. So, uh, yeah, I'll probably tell her how I stack up next to the $10,000 bid guy when I got $72. That's probably uh, where we stood, $10,000, $72. Uh, and, Yeah. You gotta be humble. You gotta uh, know your limitations. And I don't stack well next to those guys. I don't stack that well. I don't stack well next to guys here my age who are fat, but 
have a boat and a couple of million dollars. I don't stack well against them either. I stack well against probably some guy hanging at a strip club who lives paycheck to paycheck. Uh, I probably stack okay next to that guy, but uh, I don't stack well against uh, uh, guys like that guy and a lot of other guys who have boats and were short and fast, but have a lot of money. Ah, uh, I don't know. You, again, you gotta be humble. You gotta know your limit. Patience. You gotta admit. You gotta be. You gotta say, "Hey, I'm gonna be honest with you." What you see is pretty much what you get. I mean, I'm, I, you know, I make okay money. Uh, I'm not gonna impress anybody with how much money I make. Maybe two more zeros at the end of my my income. Now we're talking. But uh, other than that, you know, and it's just this isn't all that. Uh, this hasn't. This hasn't. This this is age normally. You know, there are guys who are my age who look far worse. So that's the best thing I can say about me right, right now. And uh, I don't beat women. I'm a good catch. I'm a good, good father. Uh, I'm trying to sell myself here. Uh, I mean, to, to, I got to admit, speaking about this guy, I don't know where he is now. This was 15, a good 15, 16 years ago that this guy... I met him, and you know, so who knows where he is now? I know where I am. I'm talking to you right now. And on that note, that's all I got to say. This has been JP Alexander for the Rubber Dogs Unleashed. And until the next time, ciao.